Today, I wanna to show you how to set up VMware Fusion 13 on a Mac. Now, for people who don't know, VMware Fusion allows you to create virtual environments on a Mac. So you can use it to install Windows or Linux and run those applications directly from your Mac desktop. Now, the reason why I had to set up VMware Fusion is to play Minecraft um, because yeah, this is the first time I actually downloaded it and played it. And the good thing about version 13 is that it has support for DirectX 11, which means it has gaming support. And honestly, it was actually very simple to install. And a lot of the videos were about six months old and they showed you how to download a Windows 11 ISO, do all these stuff, but things have changed since those videos were released. So I thought, hey, I might as well create my own video and show you how to install uh, Windows 11 using VMware Fusion for the Mac. Now the software comes in two flavors, a pro, which you have to pay for, but there is a free version, which is the VMware Fusion 13 player, which is free for personal use. And I should also mention that the other competitor in this space, which is Parallels, you have to pay for that. But this version, especially if you use the player, it is absolutely free for personal use. So if you want to install Windows 11 on your Mac to play games or to use some, some applications, then just test out the player. Now to get started, all you need to do is go to the VMware site and scroll down to the bottom and you will see two options down here. You see you have the pro, but click on the Fusion 13 player for Mac OS 12 and up. And here, click on register for your personal license. You do have to register an account, but that is relatively simple. And then once you have registered, you will see a license key here. Of course, you can't see my license key because it is Blurred, and all you need to do is click on manually download and go ahead and download version 13.5.0 as of this recording. Now, I've already downloaded the application, so I won't do that, but go ahead and download and install the application. Once you've downloaded and installed VMware Fusion Player, you will see this select the installation method, and you will also see this icon up the top here. So if I click on here, I can see my other Windows 11 install. But if I click on virtual machine library here, I can see all of my available machines. But from the select the installation method from here, you can actually start installing your virtual machine. So if you click on create a new custom virtual machine here, you can see uh, the options that you have. So under Microsoft Windows, you have Windows 11, ARM, then under Linux, you have a few options here, then other, you have some other options. But the option we want to focus on is if we go back, we want to click on get Windows from Microsoft. Now, as I mentioned, all of the older videos mentioned about downloading an ISO file of Windows 11 and doing all this hacky stuff through command line. But now all you need to do is click on get Windows from Microsoft. And then here it gives you some information about the steps, some limitations, and then just click on continue and select your edition and then click on download Windows. Now, this will go ahead and download Windows for you. Now, depending on your network connection or your internet connection, this might take a while. So what I'll do is I'll pause this video and come back once it has downloaded. Once the ISO has been downloaded, you should see a path to the file and you should be able to click on continue. Click on it and then make sure you have UEFI selected, which is selected by default, then click on continue and then enter in a password, which is used to encrypt some files in your virtual image. Now, this isn't the password for Windows 11, that you can set, set up separately. This is just used for encryption. So click on auto generate password or enter in your own password. I'll just click on auto generate and then I'll make sure it is also remembered in Max Keychain. And then click on continue. Select create a new virtual disk because we are creating a brand new installation and then click on continue. And then here we can see a summary of our virtual machine. A lot of these options can be changed later on. So just click on finish 
and then select a location for your virtual machine. I will just change the file name because I already have a Windows 11 virtual machine. So I'll just call this one demo and then click on save. And now it is going to go ahead and boot up Windows for the first time. And then make sure you click to boot and you wanna do that nice and quick. And then you should see the actual Windows loading screen. And now we have to go ahead and just install it quickly. So click on next. Of course, change the language options if you want the keyboard layout and things like that. But I'll just skip through this pretty quickly. So I'll click on next and then click on install. Now at this point, you can put in an actual product key to activate your Windows 11 copy. Now you don't actually need a product key to run things. So if you have one, use it. If you don't, then click on, I don't have a product key, then select Windows Home, or in this case, I will select Windows 11 Pro, and then click on next. Read the terms and conditions, scroll down to the bottom, as you do mostly, accept them, and then click on next. And because this is a fresh Windows install, let's select custom, select our disk, and then click on next. And then give this a few minutes to install. Now, once Windows has finished installing, it will restart and then come back to this screen. So just give it a few moments to install and do whatever it has to do. Now that Windows has been installed, let's go ahead and configure Windows 11. So for country, I will select Australia because I am based in Australia and I'll click on next. I will leave the keyboard layout as US, even though I use Dvorak and not QWERTY, but I'll skip that for now because you can change keyboard layouts later on. Now it's gonna go ahead and check for updates. Now, in other videos that I watched, you did have to install a VMware tools package to get networking and graphics to work. In this version, everything kind of worked out of the box. I will show you how to install the VMware tools because it actually gives you better DirectX 11 support. All of the network stuff just worked out of the box. Now we need to give our device an actual name. I'll call this one Win11 Demo. Click on next and then just give it another moment. Now select setup for personal use and then click on sign in. Now you need to log in with your Microsoft account. So let me go ahead and log in with mine and then click on sign in. And because I've already installed Windows 11, it is asking for me to restore from a PC backup. In this example, I actually wanna skip this. So let me click on more options and then click on, yep, here we go, set up as new PC. And then here you create a pin which will be used to log in to Windows 11. So let me go ahead and create one and then click on okay. Then here, click on next, or if you wanna adjust the privacy settings, you can do so. And let's just click on skip, just to skip through these sections. Let's skip this as well. And let's click on not now. We can configure that stuff later. Let's decline, no, we don't want Office 365. No, we don't want 100 gig. Let's skip all of that, skip for now. And now I believe Windows is checking for updates. Here we go. Hopefully this is it. I think this is it. Things, getting things ready for you. Okay, so now what I think is gonna happen is it is gonna do a bunch of updates. So make sure you don't shut, shut your virtual machine off and just let it run through these updates. So once Windows has done all these updates and restarted, you should be redirected to this desktop. So right now we have a working version of Windows 11. Now, before we go off and download games and install other things, the next thing we need to install is the VMware tools. Now, this will give us better 3D acceleration and also I think network support or something like that. But out of the box, my network worked, which was great. The internet works properly. So to do that, what you want to do is jump out of the virtual machine. And you can do that just by clicking Control Command and then the mouse will jump out. Or I do think it does a pretty good job of jumping out. So here you can see that we are in the virtual machine. And then if we jump out, we 
uh, out of the, the virtual machine. So back in the day when I used VirtualBox, you know, the mouse often got stuck in the virtual machine, but Fusion does a pretty good job of switching between it. What we need to do is click on virtual machine up the top here and then click on install VMware tools. So go ahead and click on that. And what it's gonna do is it'll attach the VMware tools as a virtual CD-ROM. So click on install and then something should randomly appear. Here we go. It should appear here. And then if you click on it, you'll see this setup. Or if you click on, I believe, Command E and open up Explorer, there we go. You should see uh, the CD or the DVD down here. And again, click on setup here as well. And then click on yes. And now it's gonna go ahead and install a bunch of stuff. As I mentioned, this will give you way better 3D acceleration and also the desktop will look a lot nicer because you can run it at different resolutions. So click on it and then click on next. And then here you have three options, typical, complete or custom. I always like to look at what's in custom. So you can see here it's installing drivers uh, and also USB mouse drivers. Just click on that and then click on install. And so give that a moment as it goes ahead and installs things. And straight away, you'll notice that the desktop will automatically switch to a higher resolution. So you can straight away see that uh, the drivers are helping out. So click on finish, and this actually feels a lot nicer and a lot smoother. And let's just restart it. So the virtual machine is gonna go ahead and restart. And now we have an actual login page. So if we click on it, let's enter in our pin, which we entered in when we were setting things up. It is now logging me in. And you can see that things are looking a lot sharper. And that is thanks to the extra drivers that we installed. So at this point, we have a working version of Windows 11. Now, if you want, you can right click and then go to display settings and have a play and adjust the actual resolution because you may wanna have it smaller or larger depending on your setup. What you can also do is if you jump out of the virtual uh, machine, you can resize it and it will automatically, I believe, resize. If you double click and, uh, and go full screen here, it will automatically resize it for you, which is very helpful. Another thing you may wanna do is up the top here, if you go into virtual machine and then click on settings, you do have a few options. So the first thing is under general here, this just gives you the name and also you can add in a few notes. You can also configure the keyboard and mouse. If you click on processes and memory here, you can adjust the uh, amount of processes that need to be used and also the memory. So you may want to slightly adjust this. I did hear in one of the videos that you want to set the processes to half of your amount. So however many cores you have, you want to adjust it to half. But I do believe that Fusion Player, because it is free, I think it limits it to a certain amount of cores. Look at the documentation on VMware. So just be aware of that. But of course you need to shut things down properly. Now, one thing to be aware of is that if you say jump out of here and then click on this up the top here, this is just suspending the virtual machine. It is not saving it. So, so when I was playing with this, first of all, I just simply saved it. It suspended the virtual machine. You can actually go ahead and close it. And then if you come back here and click on it here, I do believe, no, you need to click on it. Okay, so if we start it up, it's now starting it up at its original state, but you cannot make any changes to the memory or processes until it's fully shut off. So here, again, if I suspend this virtual machine, so just give it a second, and then go to virtual machine settings, come here and adjust a few things, I, you can't. So here it actually tells you that you need to shut it down. So the way to shut it down properly is to just, again, resume it, you need to resume it and then click on virtual machine and then just click on shut down. I do believe you can click on start menu. It's been a while since I've used Windows, honestly. Oh yeah, I think you can click on this one down here, but I just like to do it from up here. Click on shut down, shut it down fully. 
So you should see this shutting down screen. And then if you go to virtual machine, settings, processes, and memory, you can go ahead and adjust things as you like. Now, if we go back to show all and click on display, here you have the options for 3D acceleration. Now, you will see a message here saying that you have to install the VMware tools if you haven't installed it. So there will be a message here, but because we have installed it, we have access to these options here. And then down below you have other options, which I haven't really played around with, but if you wanna modify things like CD, DVD, sound card, USB, startup, disk encryption, and click, or if you wanna adjust advanced stuff, you can do so from here. Now, the final thing I wanna show you is how to install Minecraft. First of all, do not go to the Minecraft website and download the launcher from the website, because I do believe, uh, that the launcher should only be used if you're on Windows 10 or below. But instead, go to your start menu and then click on Microsoft Store. It will download the Microsoft Store application first and you do have a little progress bar down at the bottom. It may be hard to see, but it is there. So wait for the Store app to download. Once the Microsoft App Store has been downloaded, click on it to load it up and then search for Minecraft. And because I'm already logged in with my Microsoft account, which has purchased the game, all I need to do is click on the addition, which I've purchased, and I should see install. So go ahead and simply click on install, click on yes, there will be a few pop-ups, and then wait for it to download the game. Once everything has been downloaded, you should see this play button right here. Simply click on it, and then it will open up Minecraft for you. You can even search for it just by clicking on the star button. And I do believe if you search for Minecraft, you will see it here. You can go ahead and start playing it. But then if we just give it a moment to load things up, here you can see we have full screened it, well, made it full width. So let's just give it a moment. Let's just close this. Now, because this is a fresh install, you may have to sign in. But if I just click on play, create a new world, skip through all of this, just click on create. It'll go ahead and create everything for me. And then we can start playing Minecraft. And here you can see you have a full working version of Minecraft. And surprisingly, it's pretty snappy. Uh, the frame rate is pretty good. It's totally playable. Of course, because I am running my Mac on a 4K screen, it is at a high resolution. So, so I could resize the screen to make it a smaller resolution just to get the better frame rate. But other than that, it does a pretty good job and it is pretty snappy and pretty stable. I haven't had any problems playing with it. Mind you, I've just been playing with it for about a day after getting it installed, but yeah. Now, best of all, this is all free. So you won't have to pay for parallels. Um, you can just download VMware Fusion Player version 13, installed Windows. The only thing you need to buy, of course, is Minecraft. So that is how you install Windows 11 using Fusion Player 13.